In today's video, we will learn how to protect your Next.js API routes using Next Auth. So let's dive right in. First, let's start by creating a new Next.js application. Okay, let's open it up with VS Code. And let's just fire up the dev server to see that everything is working. I'll type in yarn dev and open the localhost 3000 and we get the default Next.js application. Great. So the plan now is to add the next auth to this application and then add a login button that we can use to log in and log out and then create one API route that is protected, meaning that you can't access it without logging in. So let's start by getting rid of all this boilerplate code. So I'll open the index.js file and from the render method, I will just remove everything like this and we don't need those imports anymore like this and then I will just for now print hello over here let's see okay it's working and next as I mentioned we will use next auth for the authentication so let's open up the next auth web page and I will just go over here to the get started section and copy this install command so we will use yarn to add the next auth package so I will stop the server and paste in the command like that and next let's see the get started page so what we want to do next is create this next auth.js file which will handle the authentication so what I'm gonna do is just copy this code over here and looks like we need to create a folder called auth into the API folder and then place this inside of that. So let's do that next. So inside the API folder, I will create a new folder called auth. And inside of that, I will create that auth file. Then I'll paste in the code that we copied. And let's take a closer look on this file. So we are importing this GitHub provider and then passing in client ID and client secret. So what this means is that we will use GitHub for authentication or logging in. So we will use our GitHub credentials to log in. And that's totally fine for this. We could use some other ones also. They, they have these adapters for Twitter, Facebook, and a bunch of others. But for now, let's just use the uh, GitHub provider. So next, what we need to do is to create a GitHub uh, application that we will use for the authentication. So right here you can see that we are getting these uh, GitHub secret and GitHub ID from the environment variables. So in order to get those, let's go to GitHub and you can go to the developer settings. So just going to the this URL slash settings slash apps and then go to the OAuth apps and you can see I already have one, but let's create a brand new for this application. And let's give it a name like this. And then for the homepage URL, we can just type in the local host 3000 for now. And then this authorization callback URL for GitHub, we want to put localhost 3000 slash API slash auth slash callback slash GitHub. And that should be it. Let's register the application. So now we get all this information. So right here we can see the client ID, which is this one over here. And then the client secret can be generated over here. So let's do that. So over here is the secret for our application. So let's now take these two values and put them into our application so we can uh, use them. So switch back to the VS code and you can see that we get these from this process.env dot then the variable name. One way you could do this is to just put the uh, ID and secret over here like this but uh, this is not good because this way 
the secrets will be committed uh, together with your code and that's something you don't want. So let's keep it like this and in order to define these environment variables we can create an environment file in our repository. So let's do that. I'll call it .env.local and right away you can see it's grayed out which means that it's in git ignore so it won't be committed, committed uh, with the other files. So let's open that up and inside of here let's define those variables. So github id and then github secret like this and go back to the github and copy the id and paste it in and then for the secret let's copy this one and paste it in like this. Let's save it and I think our application should be ready, uh, the github application. So let's switch back to the next auth and everything should be fine in here also. So next step let's go back to the next auth web page. So we created the next auth file. Next we need to wrap our uh, application inside of this session provider. So I'll just copy everything from here also and open the pages uh, app JSX file. And I'll just remove everything and paste in the code we copied. So what we are doing here is getting the session provider from next auth and then just wrapping the application inside of this uh, session provider and providing the session as a prop for that provider. And I know we are using the app.js file uh, over here and not the Next.js 13 app folder. And that's just because this is uh, simpler to set up. And if you want to set it up in Next.js 13 and the app folder, I have a video also about that. So be sure to check that out because it's also possible with the app folder. And if you want to use it, check out the video. It's all there. But for this example we will use the app.js file just because it's faster and easier to set up right now. So now that we have wrapped our application inside the session provider, the one thing left to do is add the login button and we get the uh, example login button also in the get started section of next auth. So over here is an example login button, so I will just copy that and go to VS Code and create a new folder called components. And inside of that, I will create the login button component and paste in the code and save it. And now let's go to the pages and the index.js file and replace the hello text with the login button. And let's import it like this and uh, yeah so now I think our application is all set up for uh, logging in through github so let's try it out and fire up the dev server and open the localhost 3000. Let me just make this a bit bigger so we are getting the not signed in text which, which is coming from the login button over here because we are not signed in. So let's try to sign in. So when I click this I get this uh, sign in with github and this comes because we added the github provider inside the next auth JS file. So if we would add more providers over here they would appear then on this page. So for github we want to sign in with it so let's click that and now it's asking us that do we want to authorize the application we created to use it to log in or authorize so yeah authorize and it redirects us to our localhost 3000 and it says that we are signed in okay great so the sign in is working so next let's actually create the api route and add the protection for it. 
So I'll go to the VS Code and I'll create new API route inside the API folder and let's call it protected like this and just for now I will copy the hello API route inside of it just to test it out that it's working like this. So let's switch to the browser and try to access that API route. Okay, looks like it's working. So we get the hello from protected text. So now what we want to do is actually log out. So let's sign out. And I will open up that API route to a different tab like this. And right now we can see that we get the hello from protected text. So it's still working. Okay, so now let's add a check for the API route to see that the user is logged in. And if the user is not logged in, let's show a message that, hey, you need to log in. So I will switch to the VS code and I have the protected.js API route open. And let me add some code over here for the check and then let's go through it together line by line. Okay, so right now what I did was first of all added two imports, one for the auth options, which comes from the next auth file we had over here. And we will use it later on in the code. And then I imported the unstable get server session function from the next auth next. And then I changed the handler function to async because we are using as asynchronous function, the get server session function. And then on line five, we are getting the user session. And how we are getting that is with the unstable get server session function. And that takes the request response and the auth options that we imported as a parameter. And as the name suggests, this is still unstable. So there might be some bugs or something like that. But this is still the way that NextAuth recommends the, to do this in their web page. And then on line seven, we are simply checking that if the session was not found, then we are sending the response that, hey, you must log in. And if it was found, it won't go into this if clause and it will go to the end over here and return the hello from protected text. So let's test it out. So right now we are not signed in. So let's try to open up the protected API route and refresh the page. And it looks like we are getting the message, you must be logged in. And that's what we want. So let's try to actually sign in over here. Let's sign in. All right then try to refresh the page and uh, looks like we are still getting the same text and we are actually signed out is there something wrong okay so we get this uh, decryption error and i think what this is all about so we still need to define two more variables in our environment variables file and those variables are next auth URL and next auth secret. So let me just add those like this. So for the URL, we are just putting the localhost 3000, which is our URL. And this next auth secret can be anything you want. So I just added a test over here. So let's save this and try it again. So I'll go and sign in. We are signed in. Now let's see the API route and refresh the page. Okay, so now we get the hello from protected text and we are still signed in in the other tab. Great. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want to use the next auth with Next.js 13 app structure, that's totally possible. And I have this video over here showing how to do just that. I'm also planning on making more of these next auth videos. So if you would like to see those, please do let me know in the comments. And also don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are not already. But that's it.
for now. I'll see you in the next video.